Hey, Shik, how you doing? Good, how are you? Then not bad, how's your anniversary? Uh, <laughs> well, my wife uh, had to work and uh, she had a, a lot of stuff to do, like admissions and, you know, like a lot of computer work, so we ended up not doing anything except, you know, having a bottle of, uh, of uh, you know, sparkling grape juice. We don't drink, so, you know. That's <laughs> she had a funny uh, meme from the mm. last year. It was like two cu a couple sitting on a sectional couch, you know, like uh, one like laid down on on each side. You know, this is how we spend our <laughs> our <laughs> Valentines. It's pretty funny, you know. When you get older, it's like you know that's the way it <laughs> is. But you know, we gave each other cards and stuff like that. But you know. It's a thought that counts. So, uh, let's see here. We're on text 35, I believe. I just started a massive book. You ever heard of the Chaitanya Bhagavat? Mm -hmm. That's uh, um, the first uh, bi biography of uh, Lord Chaitanya. It was written by Vrindavan Das Thakur, who was a disciple of uh, Lord Nityananda. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. And uh, anyway, uh, I read one version of it, but Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Srila Prabhupada's guru, wrote another one and uh, with the commentary. And just the Adi Khanda, the first third of the book, is over a thousand pages of PDF files. So it's just massive. Probably the first chapter is probably at least four hours long. But uh, I can't wait to read it because it's one of my favorite books. I was just blown away by the awesomeness of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda is awesome. I mean, he's like Ananta. He holds, he has a thousand heads, and he's holding all the planets on his hoods. At the same time, he's glorifying uh, Lord Chaitanya with his thousands of heads and Krishna. You know, <laughs> so he, uh, and he's all many so many other things. You know, it's like he's also. Uh, He's also Lakshman, he's also Balaram, and he's also Krishna's bed and his Chamara fan and all different kinds of uh, paraphernalia, you know, that Krishna uses. He incarnates as those items. So it's pretty amazing how that personality is. And he's the source of all incarnations and and he's also the guru, the Sri Guru is the topmost guru. And nobody can come to Krishna but through Lord Nityananda. He is the guru. And and uh, I just remember reading um, uh, Satsarup Maharaj. He was saying that uh, <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada was actually a manifestation of Lord Nityananda. Because, you know, the, he's the guru. So, anyway, that's a pretty awesome book. I recommend it highly. It's like so visually uh, satisfying. It's very well easy to read. Of course, you know, if you get into the purports of Bhakti Siddhanta, I'm sure it's it's going to be pretty uh, technical because he, he reads in kind of a, he writes uh, in a little bit technical way, but, you know, I can't wait to read it. <clears throat> so, um, you want to start off with uh, text 35? Can you see? Yeah. All right. In text 35. Shri Bhagavan Vachan. Asyam Shayam Mahabaho Mano Dorni Graham Shalam Abhyasena Tu Kunteya Ariragyena Chagur Yate. Synonyms. Shri Bhagavan Vacha, the supreme or the personality of God had said. Asam Shayam, undoubtedly. Mahabaho, O mighty armed one. Mana, the mind. Turnigraham, difficult to curb. Chalam, flickering. Abhyasena, by practice. Tu, but. Kunteya, O son of Kunti. Ragyena, by detachment. Cha, also. Kuryate, can be so controlled. <clears throat> Translation. Lord Sri Krishna said, O mighty armed son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible by suitable practice, and by detachment. Purport. 
The difficulty of controlling the obstinate mind as expressed by Arjuna is accepted by the personality of Godhead. But at the same time, he suggests that by practice and detachment, it is possible. What is that practice? In the present age, no one can observe the strict rules and regulations of placing oneself in a sacred place, focusing the mind on the super-soul, restraining the senses and mind, observing celibacy, remaining alone, etc. By the practice of Krishna consciousness, however, one engages in nine types of devotional service to the Lord. The first and foremost of such devotional engagements is hearing about Krishna. This is a very powerful transcendental method for purging the mind of all misgivings. The more one hears about Krishna, the more one becomes enlightened and detached from everything that draws the mind away from Krishna. By detaching the mind from activities not devoted to the Lord, one can very easily learn Ayuragya. Ayuragya means detachment from matter and engagement of the mind and spirit. Impersonal spiritual detachment is more difficult than attaching the mind to the activities of Krishna. This is practical because by hearing about Krishna, one automatically, or one becomes automatically attached to the Supreme Spirit. This attachment is called Varesha Nubhava, spiritual satisfaction. It is just like this feeling of satisfaction a hungry man has for every morsel of food he eats. The more one eats while hungry, the more one feels satisfaction and strength. Similarly, by discharge of devotional service, one feels transcendental satisfaction as the mind becomes detached from material objectives. It is something like curing a disease by expert treatment and appropriate diet. Hearing of the transcendental activities of Lord Krishna is therefore expert treatment for the mad mind, and eating the food stuff offered to Krishna is the appropriate diet for the suffering patient. This treatment is the process of Krishna consciousness. Yeah, that's why I read so much, because reading is also hearing. And when you get attached to Krishna through hearing, then you're not attached to so many other things that your mind does, you know, and your senses. <clears throat> it's really pretty simple. But, uh, you know, once you get into it, it's hard to stop because you, you don't want to, you know, Prabhupada said, you know, if anybody who doesn't read my books, they fall down, you know. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's inevitable because if you're on the mental platform, you'll become frustrated and you'll just engage in sense gratification and, and all kinds of other mental speculations. So you have to read every single day. And that's what I try to do. Text six, 36. Asam yatatmana yogo dus prapa itime mati vasyatmana tuyai yatata shakyo vaptum upayata. Synonyms, asamyata, unbridled, atmana, by the mind, yoga, self-realization, duspripa, duspripa, difficult to obtain, iti, thus, me, my, mati, opinion, vasya, controlled, atmana, by the mind, to, but, yatata, while endeavoring, sakya, practical, abaptum, to achieve, apyata, apayata, by appropriate means. Translation. For one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is difficult work. But he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success. That is my opinion. Purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead declares that one who does not accept the proper treatment to detach the mind from material engagement can hardly achieve success in self-realization. Trying to practice yoga while engaging the mind in material enjoyment is like trying to ignite a fire while pouring water on it. Yoga practice without mental control is a waste of time. Such a show of yoga might be materially lucrative, but it is useless as far as spiritualization is concerned. Therefore, one must control the mind by engaging it constantly in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Unless one is engaged in Krishna consciousness, he cannot steadily control the mind. A Krishna conscious person easily achieves the result of yoga practice without separate endeavor, but a yoga practitioner cannot achieve success without becoming Krishna conscious. Go ahead. X37. Arjuna Uvacha. Ayati Shad Yopito Yunjaj Chalita Manasa Aparapya Yoga Samsidin. Kamgatim Krishna Gachati. Synonyms. Arjuna Uvacha. Arjuna said, 
the yati, the unsuccessful transcendentalist, shraddhaya, with faith, peta, engaged, yoga, from the mystic link, chalita, dera, deviated, manasa, who has such a mind, aparapya, failing to attain, yoga sam sidim, the highest perfection in mysticism, kam, which, katim, destination, krishna, o krishna, kachati, the chiefs, translation, Arjuna said, O Krishna, what is the destination of the unsuccessful transcendentalist who in the beginning takes to the process of self-realization with faith, but who later desists due to worldly mindedness and thus does not Recording in progress. In mysticism? Uh, purport. <clears throat> the path of self-realization or mysticism is described in the Bhagavad Gita. The basic principle of self-realization is knowledge that the living entity is not this material body, but that he is different from it, and that his happiness is in eternal life, bliss, and knowledge. These are transcendental beyond both body and mind. Self-realization is sought by the path of knowledge, by the practice of the Eightfold System, or by Bhakti Yoga. In each of these processes, one has to realize the constitutional position of the living entity, his relationship with God, in the activities whereby he can reestablish the lost link and achieve the highest perfectional stage of Krishna consciousness. Following any of the above mentioned three methods, one is sure to reach the supreme goal sooner or later. This was asserted by the Lord in the second chapter. Even a little endeavor on the transcendental path offers a great hope for deliverance. Out of these three methods, the path of bhakti yoga is especially suitable for this age because it is the most direct method of God realization. To be doubly assured, Arjuna is asking Lord Krishna to, confer, to confirm his former statement. One may sincerely accept the path of self-realization, but the process of cultivation of knowledge and the practice of the Eightfold Yoga system are generally very difficult for this age. Therefore, despite constant endeavor, one may fail for many reasons. First of all, one may not be sufficiently serious about following the process. To pursue the transcendental path is more or less to declare war on the illusory energy. Consequently, whenever a person tries to escape the clutches of the illusory energy, she tries to defeat the practitioner by various allurements. A conditioned soul is already allured by the modes of material energy, and there is every chance of being allured again, even while performing transcendental disciplines. This is called Nujach Chalita Manasa, deviation from the transcendental path. Arjuna is inquisitive to know the results of deviation from the path of self-realization. Yeah, <clears throat> it's war, all out war on the material energy. Fortunately, we have Krishna on the chariot, you know, he's stronger than Maya. We can't do anything to Maya. Maya's like around the corner. She's following behind us. And not only that, she's when you turn the corner, she's she's behind the corner and halfway down the block. Somebody described it in that way. Text 38. Kashino bhaya viprastas china brahm eva nasiti aprastito mahabaho vimudho brahmanapati synonyms. Kashit, whether or not, not abhaya both viprasta deviated from china torn abram cloud eva like nasiti perishes. A prostita without any position, Mahabaho, almighty armed Krishna, Vimuda, bewildered Brahmana of transcendence, Pati on the path. Translation Almighty armed Krishna, does not such a man who is bewildered from the path of transcendence fall away from both spiritual and material success and perish like a ribbon cloud with no position in any sphere? Purport There are two ways to progress. Those who are materialists have no interest in transcendence. Therefore, they are more interested in material advancement by economic development or in promotion to the heavenly planets by appropriate work. When one takes to the path of transcendence, one has to cease all material activities and sacrifice all forms of so-called material happiness. If the, transcend if the aspiring transcendentalist fails, then he apparently loses both ways. In other words, he can enjoy neither material happiness nor spiritual success. He has no position like a riven cloud, a cloud in the sky sometimes deviates from a small cloud and joins a big one. 
But if it cannot join a big one, then it is blown away by the wind and it becomes a non-entity in the vast sky. The Brahmana Pati is the path of transcendental realization through knowing oneself to be spiritual in essence, part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, who is manifested as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Lord Sri Krishna is the fullest manifestation of the Supreme Absolute Truth, and therefore one who is surrendered to the Supreme Person is a successful transcendentalist. To reach this goal of life through Brahman or and Paramatma realization takes many, many births, Bahunam Janmana Mante. Therefore, the supermost path of transcendental realization is Bhakti Yoga or Krishna consciousness, the direct method. <clears throat> Text 39. Itan me sam shayam krishna chitum arhasi asheshata tvaranya sam sayas yasya chitanahe upapad yate. Synonyms. Itat, this is me, my. Sam shayam, doubt. Krishna, O Krishna, chitum, to dispel. Arhasi, you are requested. Asheshata, completely, uh, tvat, then you, anya, other, samsha, yasya, of the doubt, asya, this, cheta, remover, na, never, he, certainly, upapadeyate, is to be found. Translation, <clears throat> this is my doubt, O Krishna, and I ask you to dispel it completely, but for you, no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. Purport. Krishna is the perfect knower of past, present, and future. In the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord said that all living entities existed individually in the past. They exist now in the present, and they continue to retain individual identity in the future, even after liberation from the material entanglement. So he has already cleared up the question of the future of the individual living entity. Now, Arjuna wants to know the future of the unsuccessful transcendentalist. No one is equal to or above Krishna, and certainly the so-called great sages and philosophers who are at the mercy of material nature cannot equal him. Therefore, the verdict of Krishna is the final and complete answer to all doubts because he knows past, present, and future perfectly, but no one knows him. Krishna and Krishna conscious devotees alone can know what is what. <clears throat> Text 40. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Parta Naveha Namutra Vinasas Tasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Krit Kaschit Durgatim Tata Gachite. Synonyms. Sri Bhagavan Vacha, the Supreme Personality of God, had said, Parta, O son of Prita, Na Eva, never is it so. Iha, in this material world, Na, never. Amrutra in the next life, Vinasha, destruction, Tasya, his, Vidyate exists, Na, never, he, certainly, Kalyanakrit, who is engaged in auspicious activities, Kashit, anyone, Durgatim, to degradation, Tata, my friend, Gachati, goes. Translation, the Supreme Personality of God had said, Son of Prita, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. Okay, we'll take turns reading the paragraphs here. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 1517, Sri Narada Muni instructs Vyasadeva as follows. Trakta sar swadharman chanu bhajam hare bhajo apakvo tapatet yato yadi. Yatrakva bhavadram abud amusya kem. Kovartapto bhajatam swadharmata. If someone gives up all material prospects and takes complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of God, it, there is no loss or degradation in any way. On the other hand, a non devotee may fully engage in his occupational duties and yet not gain anything. End quote. For material prospects, there are many activities, both scriptural and customary. A transcendentalist is supposed to give up all material activities for the sake of spiritual advancement in life, Krishna consciousness. One may argue that by Krishna consciousness, one may attain the highest perfection if it isn't completed, but one 
If one does not attain such a perfectional stage, then he loses both materially and spiritually. It is enjoined in the scriptures that one has to suffer the reaction for not executing prescribed duties. Therefore, one who fails to discharge transcendental activities properly becomes subjected to these reactions. The Bhagavatam ensures the unsuccessful transcendentalist that there need be no worries, even though he may be subjected to the reaction of for not perfectly executing prescribed duties, he is still not a loser. Because auspicious Krishna consciousness is never forgotten, and one so engaged will continue to be so even if he is lowborn in the next life. On the other hand, one who simply follows strictly prescribed duties need not necessarily attain auspicious results if he is lacking in Krishna consciousness. Um, the purport may be understood as follows. Humanity may divide, be divided into two sections, namely the regulated and the non-regulated. Those who are engaged simply in bestial sense gratification without knowledge of their next life or spiritual salvation belong to the non-regulated -regula section. And those who follow the principles of prescribed duties in the scriptures are classified amongst the regulated section. The non-regulated section, both civilized and non-civilized, educated and non-educated, strong and weak, are full of animal propensities. Their activities are never auspicious because while enjoying the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, they perpetually remain in material existence, which is always miserable. On the other hand, those who are regulated by scriptural injunctions and who thus rise gradually to Krishna consciousness certainly progress in life. <clears throat> those who are following the path of auspiciousness can be divided into three sections. Namely, number one, the followers of scripture, scriptural rules and regulations who are enjoying material prosperity. Number two, those who are trying to find ultimate liberation from material existence. And number three, those who are devotees in Krishna consciousness. Those who are following the rules and regulations of the scriptures for material happiness may be divided further into two classes, those who are fruitive workers and those who desire no fruit for sense gratification. Those who are after fruit of results for sense gratification may be elevated to a higher standard of life, even to the higher planets, but still, because they're not free from material existence, they're not following the truly auspicious path. The only auspicious activities are those which lead one to liberation. Any li activity which is not aimed at ultimate self-realization or liberation from the material bodily concept of life is not at all auspicious. Activity in Krishna consciousness is the only auspicious activity, and anyone who voluntarily accepts all bodily discomforts for the sake of making progress on the path of Krishna consciousness can be called a perfect transcendentalist under severe austerity. And because the Eightfold Yoga system is directed toward the ultimate realization of Krishna consciousness, such practice is also auspicious, and no one who is trying his best in this matter need fear degradation. Text uh, 41. Kapya punya kirtam lokan usitva sasvati samam suchinam shri matam gehe yoga barashto hihi jayate. Synonyms. Kapya, after achieving punya kirtam, of those who perform the pious activities, lokan, planets, usitvi, or usitva. After dwelling, Shashvati, many, Sama, years, Suchinam, of the pious, Srimatam, of the prosperous, Gehi, in the house, Yoga Bharashta, one who has fallen from the path of self realization, Abhijayate, takes his birth. Translation The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people, or into a family of rich aristocracy. The purport. The unsuccessful yogis are divided into two classes. One has fallen after very little progress and one has fallen after long practice of yoga. The yogi who falls after a short period of practice goes to the higher planets where pious living entities are allowed to enter. After prolonged life there, one is sent back again to this planet to take birth in the family of a righteous Brahmana or Vaishnava or of aristocratic merchants. 
the real purpose of yoga practice is to achieve the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness, as explained in the last verse of this chapter. But those who not persevere to such an extent and who fail because of material allurements are allowed by the grace of the Lord to make full utilization of their material propensities. And after that, they are given opportunities to live prosperous lives in righteous or aristocratic families. Those who are born in such families may take advantage of the facilities and try to elevate themselves fully to Krishna consciousness. So, with the uh, you know uh, unsuccessful you know or incomplete yogic practice, and um, you know going to another lifetime in, in one of the higher planets. Um, so I'm not sure, like what the like how to take that because I mean if, if you know. My understanding, you know, we don't remember our past lives. So it's almost like, you know, material starting over. You go somewhere, have this level of enjoyment. You know, you're kind of burning off the good karma. But then you, like, return to a different life. But without any memory of, of that, I'm not sure what would be the purpose of having that birth in, the, in, in a more heavenly planet, you know, because it would be not remembered. And it doesn't seem to be really conducive to continuing on the path of Krishna consciousness. Well, the answer to that question is that it is actually, uh, even though one doesn't remember your gross material memories from your past life, the propensity for Krishna consciousness is still there. And uh, therefore, uh, when you take up your, your next birth, you automatically start out where you left off, you know, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. Just like it says that if you, if you're very, very fortunate, you're going to meet devotees. That means you have done something in your last life to, to um, qualify you to meet devotees of the Lord. So therefore you can take it for granted that if you have uh the association of devotees in this life or the next life, then you have must have performed some kind of Krishna consciousness in your past life. It's not that you start from scratch. It's only in very, very rare cases where Krishna allows a living entity to be, uh, you know, elevated by the mercy of Krishna alone. Usually it's through the association of devotees, you know, just like a log that's floating downstream, all of a sudden it just washes up on the, on the, uh, on the bank of the river. So in order to meet a devotee, it's a very rare thing. And uh, it only happens, you're only attracted to do that when, when you desire to associate with devotees, Krishna sends the devotee. And so that, that <clears throat> tendency is passed on from birth after birth. And uh, you may not realize it in your current memory, but it happens nonetheless. And the advantage of taking birth in a pious or aristocratic family is that <clears throat> in a pious family, especially in a family born in a Brahmana Vaishnava family, you have a perfect situation, uh, you know, being as, you know, the son of a, a Brahmana Vaishnava family, that's like the best, you know, Prabhupada had that, you know. And he went on to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. But also in the aristocratic family, you have time, you know, you have, you don't have to work like an ass all day just to uh, make a living. You know, you have some time on your hands. And so the propensity to uh, become Krishna conscious, even in that kind of lifestyle will be there, uh, even if you don't know it. So that's, that's what I've heard.